Hi everyone, uh, did not expect to see it. So my name is Daniil, I'm CTO of Parsec, uh, Web3 infrastructure and data company. And it's actually interesting because the previous panel brought up this interesting thought about you know, uh, how uh, little UX, like UX we have right now. And I think the, I think the infrastructure and the data is a, a big part of it. And you know, we all striving to make it easier. We're striving to make it easier for, for the developers, which can, in the end, make it easier uh, for the users. And in the end, you know, increase, increase the adoption um, of blockchain in general. So I just want to speculate a little bit about the future of blockchain data. Uh, but first, you know, just want to highlight a couple, you know, problems before we get to the blockchain data itself. <clears throat> so basically, I would like to probably highlight a little bit, like, what's wrong with Web2 data, what's the difference of uh, Web3 data, and basically how we can, you know, the most of it, and how we can make it easier and more, in our case, developer-friendly. Um, and let's start with, uh, you know, what's wrong with the Web2 data. And basically, ooh, yeah, it's, you know, the usual drill, you know all of it, right? Uh, so we have these three kind of main problems of uh, monopoly at censorship, because uh, big companies and governments use us to manipulate our opinions, uh, just to put their thoughts into you know our minds. Uh, second, second big you know, subject is uh, ownership, right? Because this information actually belongs to the platforms. It doesn't belong to you. And from here comes the other problem, right? Is commercialization of your data. That is, this data that has been, you know, has been made in like a public domain uh, without your consent, well, it they might have your consent when you press, I agree to everything, but still, this is you know, not something you want, and you either profit yourself from providing your data, then other companies profit from it. So how is, how is the Web3 data is different to what we have in Web2? So the Web3 data is obviously decentralized, it doesn't belong to somebody specific, doesn't belong to certain company, uh, it just belongs to the network. It belongs to everyone, and while at least one node is still alive, the information is alive. Uh, second cornerstone, I would say, is the personalization. Uh, while we cannot say like blockchains 100% anonymous, at least uh, the information that you produce is not actually directly linked to you. So you can leave your, you can leave your footprint without worrying too much that it's going to be linked directly to you. And you, know, you, don't, have, you don't have to worry about um, you know, leaving some sort of like footsteps, you know, just trying to be as clean as possible. You can have like opinions, operations, uh, transactions without thinking too much about it. And then of course, um, uh, it's the ownership because data belongs to your, to your private key, to your address. So it's kind of a back in your hands and you more or less can decide uh, what to do with that. Um, and with that being said, uh, is it in the end all that simple? Uh, we do have our bunch of advantages, but they do indeed come, I wouldn't say with these advantages, but it comes with some challenges. Uh, and yeah, I would like to discuss some of these challenges. 
Uh, so one of them, of course, being infrastructure itself. Uh, being a node operator is a pretty big pain for any company who is in, in this business because there is a lot of issues of that, uh, with that. And these technologies, they, do, they still evolve and it would be a long way before we get a perfect solution if we ever get it. And especially for the projects that want to be you know, everywhere and want to be on as many chains as possible, this becomes a huge uh, bottleneck or a huge uh, resource train in a sense because they have to pay for all this infrastructure. Uh, the second problem kind of emerges from the first one. The, the longer blockchain exists, the bigger it gets, the more information you have. Talking even about like uh, the main EVM chains, uh, currently, it's you know it's it's if we take data alone, it's tens and tens of terabytes of data, and actually like exceeding 100 terabytes. So it's not easy to maintain, and it's the the market is you know just emerging, evolving. So as adoption grows, as the user base grows, this will be, be uh, this will be becoming like more and more of a of a problem and uh, you know the third point is efficiency that comes down from the first two uh, and the thing is that uh, it is pretty hard to get uh, to have inf this much information and to actually serve it efficiently and probably the least efficient way to get data of the blockchain, especially if you need it kind of in bulk, is to use RPC nodes, which is, you know, ironically. Um, and then there are two more points that I want to go into a little bit more details. Uh, one of them being is the uniqueness of protocols and why it is a challenge. Um, the problem is, when we're talking about blockchain data, uh, what we talk about is that we, with, for instance, with like EVM and EVM-like chains, we have been given a framework uh, to put this data on a blockchain, but we are definitely limited with this framework while it gives some you know, standardized way to put this information for everyone to use. Uh, we are limited with what we have with, you know, lock system and uh, the more data you put on the blockchain, uh, the more, more expensive it is for the users and in the long run, the more complex it is to maintain all the infrastructure and everything and, you know, efficient ways to actually access this data. Uh, so, with every protocol, uh, we have like unique set, we do have unique set of smart contracts, we do have unique set of uh, uh, different events and, you know, kind of unique internal logic. And uh, the problem here is uh, this is true even for, you know, projects of the same categories for DeFi, for DEXs, for NFT marketplaces, they all operate in a different way. They're all trying to create, you know, the most uh, efficient protocols and they all obligated in a way to use the framework, but still uh, the problem persists. Every protocol is different and you, to make sense of this data, you actually have to know this protocol very well because if you don't, uh, your, your data just will not be uh, consistent or, you know, true. Um, and one of the other points is uh, data interoperability. And what that means is that, yes, we do. We now do have the framework. We have this data on the blockchain in a byte format, in a hex format. So what do we do with that? 
and we have this unique logic. Uh, so we actually need to have systems uh, that uh, allow you to make sense of this raw blockchain data because uh, initially you kind of get you know, ones and zeros in a way or hex values or whatever it is. Uh, and with that comes other problem is that the size of all of these uh, protocols, especially if you're taking the biggest protocols like Uniswap, Aave, and uh, so on, because they have produced hundreds and millions and hundreds of millions of different events, how you can process it efficiently, because you don't want these processes to take, to take weeks for you. And of course, one of the important questions as well is how you get, uh, how you provide the access to this data and how you make it useful on the, on the front end, on the analytics side, uh, just make it useful for other developers, for other users. <clears throat> so, oh, sorry. So what possibly could be a solution for all of that? Uh, probably could uh, talk endlessly about it because there is a lot of components to that. And, uh, but I would, I would like to talk about what we believe is the most important part of this solution, at least for today and the coming future, if nothing you know, drastically changes uh, in the coming, coming years, which is, of course, always possible. Uh, so our best belief is that the future of blockchain data solutions is in solutions that will provide uh, interpretation layer, uh, a layer that will actually allow you or allow users and actually will alleviate the problems, the uh, aforementioned challenges away from the users and that will let them uh, to actually create easy and simple data solutions without thinking about, about all of it, about efficiency, about the data, about everything. Uh, and will allow you to create easy, like ETL pipelines for your specific needs, for your protocols, uh, because every protocol, you know, coming back to this thought, every protocol has a unique logic, so there is no, there is no general, there is no common solution for that. And like a winning data provider will not be just an RPC. It will not be just an API. It will be a big combine that actually have that actually has all of these points together that will provide you with easy and fast access to raw raw blockchain data because it's foundation of everything. Uh, it will provide you a way to easily develop your interpretation level so you don't have to think about the challenges, you just can think about your own protocol lo logic and the needs of your protocol, of your front ends, your back ends, your users, your analytics. You only think about that. Uh, and that as well, you don't have to think where to store, where to store the output of transformation layer because you want to be focused on building your uh, smart contracts, your protocols, and you don't want to think about, you know, kind of web two things. You also don't want to think like how to surf your like protocol specific data, how to s aggregate all of it. And I guess most importantly is how you make sure that the data you are serving uh, is consistent and reliable, so you got to be sure that every bit of the information you have processed and you have as the output of your uh, transformation level is actually is on point and do not consist of things that are not happened uh, in reality. Yeah, and with that being said, just wanted probably to 
chill a little bit, just because this is exactly what we do uh, in Parsec. And I do have only 15 seconds left, so I cannot go into a lot of details, uh, but we definitely do offer uh, a solution for all of these problems, including raw data and transformation level and all other problems that I have mentioned. And yeah, we do support AVEX and AVEX ecosystem. We do have support for subnets. So if you're looking for data solutions, custom and not custom, yeah, let's, let's connect, let's talk. We can bring you AVEX data and data for your subnets as well. Uh, thank you very much.